Hey there, it's JB. We're back and we're here to discuss our introduction to thermodynamics, which includes temperature, heat transfer, and thermal expansion. Now, I am counting on you have already had some experience in calorimetry uh, and uh, specific heat, stuff like uh, Q equals MC delta T. Some people use the mnemonic Q equals MCAT for that. Uh, also, calorimetry, how the uh, cold object absorbs all the energy from the hot object and therefore the hot object loses that exact same amount of energy. It's a way to determine specific heats. But assuming you've had all that, we're going to progress from there and go on to some cool stuff here. So, first thing we're going to talk about is thermal energy. The thermal energy of a sample is also called the internal energy of the sample. Those are used synonymously. Thermal energy, also called internal energy, it is symbolized by the letter capital U. I know that may seem like an unfortunate choice because we also use capital U for potential energy functions. Uh, so that's a problem. So you have to determine by the context what we're talking about. In this chapter, every time you see a capital U, it means internal energy. What is internal energy or thermal energy? It is simply the sum of several different types of energies that are held by molecules. So there's molecular, molecular translational kinetic energy. I've got a line here that's going to represent a molecule. And when it's moving through space whoo, in a straight line, could bounce off something. But it's moving in straight lines, which we call translational motion. Um, it's got kinetic energy. So that's one of these forms that contribute to thermal energy. There's also vibrational kinetic energy. That's when two molecules, here I've got two, or two atoms in a molecule rather, uh, they're connected by uh, a, an electromagnetic bond, which is kind of like a spring, and they can vibrate back and forth like this. That's vibrational kinetic energy. And also when you have two atoms in a molecule, they can have rotational kinetic energy. They can spin around like this. This only works though when you have a diatomic or triatomic or more atoms in a molecule. When you have a single atom, this actually can't vibrate. There's nothing to cause it to move back and forth like that. It won't vibrate. It also doesn't spin. You understand this is not, an atom is not like a lime where it actually could spin. An atom is more like a wave function. Uh, it itself is unspinnable. So one atom by itself can't spin. There also are electromagnetic interactions. When these get close, they tend to attract each other uh, due to various intra-atomic uh, forces or intramolecular forces. Uh, Van der Waals forces, for example. They tend to attract each other when they get near each other. And that means they have electromagnetic potential energy. Uh, so those all together, translational, vibrational, and rotational kinetic energy, and potential energy due to electromagnetic interactions form what is called thermal energy. Now, I'm going to just give you some examples of and show you guys uh, with some help from the PHET website what some of these types of energies look like. Now, what we have here is a model of a gas. And what those little spheres are are representing our molecules. Now these are monatomic molecules. They're just, each molecule is only made of one atom. So you can see that the type of energy that these molecules have is simply translational kinetic energy. They're just moving in straight lines. Yes, they are bouncing off one another so they can change their direction, but the only type of motion they have is linear motion or translational motion. So for this example, all the thermal energy is in the form of translational kinetic. I'm going to add some heat to this. Uh, we'll talk about what heat is momentarily, but uh, if you just took a Bunsen burner and put it under this and let it go for a while, uh, you might see that, and it might take a little bit of uh, a while to, for this to become apparent, but what's happening is the translational kinetic energy of these objects are increasing. And the temperature is also increasing. We'll discuss that later. So translational kinetic energy. Now with these types of molecules you actually can't have uh, any other type of kinetic energy because they're just individual atoms. Let's take a look at a different kind of molecule, an oxygen molecule. Now here's oxygen. 
This is a diatomic molecule. You will see that not only do they have translational kinetic energy, they're moving in straight lines, but they're also spinning. They have rotational kinetic energy. And some of them are spinning faster than others, but they all have some little bit of rotation. So that is a type of energy that ideal gases or monatomic gases cannot have rotational. I will also show you an example right here of uh, vibrational kinetic energy. If we look at these two atoms right here, uh, they are vibrating with respect to each other as if they were held together by a spring right in between the two. So uh, here's a diatomic molecule. Again, it can have vibrational kinetic energy. Monatomics can't have any of that. I would also like to show you that some molecules can have electromagnetic potential energy. Let's take a look at this demo. These molecules right here are representing a solid that are very tightly packed and very attracted to each other. Um, you can increase their potential energy by pulling them apart. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to just heat this up, increasing the distances apart and hence increasing the electromagnetic potential energy. You can see right there, I just turned this solid into a liquid. Um, and uh, the electromagnetic potential energy is much higher in that case. So again, thermal energy or internal energy, the sum of molecular translational kinetic energy, vibrational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, and that potential energy due to electromagnetic interactions. In ideal gases, this becomes a whole lot simpler. Ideal gases are considered to be composed of point particles. So ideal gases, uh, the closest we can get to them is a noble gas at low temperature and pressure. Noble gases like argon, neon, those have only one atom per molecule. So since they have only one atom, they don't have any vibrational kinetic energy. They don't have any rotational kinetic energy. All they have is translational kinetic energy. And these ideal gases are also assumed to have no electromagnetic potential energy. Uh, they don't attract each other. They just bounce off each other when they collide. For ideal gases, therefore, thermal energy consists of only translational kinetic energy. This makes it very simple. All the thermal energy, it's just translational kinetic energy of molecules. Since these molecules in ideal gases, closely modeled by noble gases, which are monatomic, they have no vibrational nor rotational kinetic energy, nor uh, any electromagnetic potential energy.